Tonight, our special transmission as Germany halts new arms exports to Israel due to legal disputes. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Elia Batul. Today is the 349th day since the onset of Israel's war on Gaza. A series of deadly Israeli airstrikes have hit central and southern Gaza today. The attacks have killed several Palestinians and left many injured. A strike in Rafah has killed at least two civilians. Media reports show six members of the Azam family have been killed after their home in Jabalia was targeted. A quadcopter attack in the Nusrat camp has injured numerous children. The violence extends beyond Gaza. In the occupied West Bank, Israeli forces continue a fierce raid in Kabatia near Jenin. At least three Palestinians have been killed. Multiple reports say 500 students are trapped inside a school due to the ongoing operations. Israeli forces have also detained 13 civilians in Qalqilia and Jayus. The detainees include a woman. Israel continues the demolition campaign in the West Bank. Houses, barracks, and agricultural rooms are being raised southwest of Hebron. The Wall and Settlement Resistance Commission reports 62 demolition operations were conducted last month. These operations affected 78 facilities. More than 10,800 Palestinians have been arrested in the past 11 months. At least 41,272 Palestinians have been killed since the onset of war. 95,551 have been injured. A report in the British medical journal The Lancet estimates that the death toll from Israel's war could be as high as 186,000. Israel is accused of genocide at the International Court of Justice. Lebanon is grappling with the aftermath of a series of devastating attacks that have left 37 civilians dead. 287 have been injured. The attacks occurred across the country Tuesday and Wednesday. Explosive devices concealed in pagers and walkie-talkies blew up, causing significant damage to homes and cars. The Lebanese government condemns the incidents as a serious breach of sovereignty. Foreign Minister Abdullah Bo Habib warns the situation could escalate into a broader conflict. Lebanon's Director General of Civil Aviation has banned passengers from carrying pagers and walkie-talkies on board any aircraft. Israel has shifted its military focus to its northern border. Defense Minister Yov Gallant is calling this a new phase of war. The attacks have raised alarms globally. American analyst Rich Outzen describes the blasts as unprecedented. Outzen warns the incident presents a new form of warfare. He says these coordinated bombings could have far-reaching implications for international security. Outzen is calling for heightened vigilance against such threats. Lebanon's Hezbollah is promising a difficult reckoning after a series of explosions. Hassan Nasrullah, the leader of Hezbollah, says the attacks crossed all red lines. Nasrullah says the enemy went beyond all controls, laws, and morals. He made the comments today in his first television address following the blast. The unprecedented attack has left the group scrambling to assess internal security breaches and restore damaged networks. Israel has not officially claimed responsibility. Experts say the operation aimed at incapacitating Hezbollah's command structure and disrupting its ability to coordinate military actions. Experts say the operation aimed at incapacitating Hezbollah's command structure and disrupting its ability to coordinate military actions. They say the group will first focus on tightening security and hunting down possible collaborators. Analysts say this cautious approach may delay an immediate counterstrike. However, it does not rule out a broader confrontation in the near future. Israeli forces are on high alert. Northern Command Chief Major General Ori Gordon says Israel is ready to change the security reality. The United Nations Security Council will convene an emergency session tomorrow. The session will address a series of devastating pager explosions in Lebanon. 
the emergency meeting has been requested by Algeria and announced by Slovenia. Beirut and Hezbollah blame Israel for the blasts. The explosion has sparked outrage from the international community. Lebanon's UN ambassador Hadi Hashem calls the attacks aggression rising to the level of war crimes. Hashem is warning of escalating tensions. The blasts have intensified the already volatile situation along the Israel and Lebanon border. Both sides continue to exchange fire following Israel's military operations in Gaza. A Hungary-based company is under scrutiny after pager devices filled with explosive caused blasts in Lebanon. The suspect firm Bach Consulting KFT is based in Budapest, Hungary. It appears to be located in a private residence. As soon as the blast occurred, the Bach website became inaccessible. However, the website can be found in the archives. The profile of the CEO Christina Arciacono Barsoni on the website shows she has worked with major international organizations. These organizations include the International Atomic Energy Agency and the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. The company has not responded to inquiries by media companies. A Taiwanese company, Gold Apollo Corporations, denies involvement. It says Bach had a license to use its brand, but handled manufacturing independently. Germany has paused new arms export licenses to Israel. It has cited ongoing legal battles that accuse Germany of complicity in Israel's war crimes. This suspension comes amid two legal cases. The first one is at the International Court of Justice, where Nicaragua has accused Germany of contributing to genocide. The second is filed by the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights in Berlin. The legal challenges have already impacted other European countries. The United Kingdom and the Netherlands have also suspended arms exports to Israel. Germany denies allegations of complicity in war crimes. It has, however, halted all new licenses until the cases are resolved. Media reports say following the cases, Germany's arms exports to Israel have significantly dropped. This year's exports total $16.1 million. This is significantly lower than last year's $363.5 million worth of exports. Canada has abstained from a United Nations vote calling for an end to Israel's unlawful presence in Gaza and the West Bank within a year. Canadian Ambassador Bob Ray says the motion is one-sided. Ray, however, agrees that Israel is illegally occupying Palestinian territories. The resolution was initiated by the State of Palestine. It is based on a July ruling by the International Court of Justice. The ruling condemns Israel's occupation of territories captured in 1967. 124 nations supported the non-binding resolution. Canada was among the 43 countries that abstained. Experts viewed this move as a shift in Canada's stance. Previously, Ottawa had a long-standing policy of supporting Israel in most UN votes. Canada has announced a fresh wave of sanctions on four individuals and two entities responsible for extremist Israeli settler violence in the occupied West Bank. The foreign ministry made the announcement yesterday via a statement. It says extremist settler violence has resulted in the loss of life and damage to Palestinian property and farming lands. The ministry says the four individuals sanctioned are Neria Ben Pazi, Noam Federman, Eden Levy, and Shlomo Sarid. The two entities are the Mount Hebron Fund and Shlom Esirik. Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie is urging Israeli authorities to ensure the protection of civilians and hold perpetrators of violence accountable. A Palestinian doctor has died in Israeli custody after being abducted from Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza. Ziad Muhammad Al Dalu was detained in March during an Israeli raid on the hospital. The raid turned Gaza's largest hospital into ruins. 
dozens of health workers were detained. Al-Dalu is the third physician in to die in Israeli detention in the past 11 months. Israel has detained more than 300 doctors since October last year. There are reports that the medical personnel is subject to widespread torture and abuse. Palestinian Health Ministry reports that more than 1,150 healthcare workers have been killed since the conflict began. The fatalities include at least 165 doctors, 260 nurses, and 76 pharmacists and 12 health workers. This year's One Million March for Children is set to take place across Canada tomorrow. The march aims to oppose LGBTQ plus inclusion in school curriculums. The event follows the inaugural march held last year. The previous event saw a significant turnout of parents and concerned citizens from various faiths and backgrounds. The event was organized by the group Hands Off Our Kids. The movement emerged in response to what they describe as LGBTQ plus indoctrination in classrooms. The march seeks to protect children from what organizers refer to as LGBTQ plus propaganda and gender ideology within the education system. The protesters also aim to ensure that no child is exposed to explicit sexual content or encouraged to question their gender identity. Participants say the event sends a clear message to elected officials that parental rights and consent must take precedent in the classroom. Last year's march was viewed as a major success, uniting concerned families from diverse religious communities. Organizers are urging parents to keep their children home from school tomorrow in solidarity with the march. That's all from our Toronto studios. Thank you for watching Muslim News Canada. We are a community channel dedicated to bringing you stories you can trust. Please like, share, and subscribe to our content. You can also comment to let us know what you think of our coverage. You can donate now by visiting muslimnetwork.tv donate. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV.